Welcome everyone to the fan art panel. Um, I'm really glad that we have a collection of really fabulous, talented artists to, uh, to join us today. So um, really quick, we're gonna go around the room with some introductions. Uh, Claire, let's start with you. Talk about who you are, where you're from briefly, and an interesting fact about yourself. Cool, uh, I'm Claire Shumla Hummel. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, California, and moved away for a while and I'm back. Um, I currently work as an artist at Valve up in Seattle. Uh, and I've previously worked at HBO and Westworld VR on a bunch of other games, including Abduction. Um, and I really like rocks. And Riven's probably partially to blame for that. <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, Tweak. Mr. Keith. Hello. Yes. Uh, I'm Tweak. Uh, I'm from England. Uh, I do arty things. And I like waffles. You like waffles. That's wonderful. Like waffles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Waffles. Waffles can be tasty. Melinda. Um, hi, I'm Melinda. I go by Riven Chan um, from the old school uh, Cyan Chat days. Um, I am currently living in Washington State. And uh, I guess my fun fact, well, uh, two fun facts. One is that I'm currently working as a senior artist on another beloved 90s franchise, Age of Empires. So that's Yay. fun. Yay! <laughs> and the uh, the second fun fact is I realized in putting together this panel that I have been making fan art for Mist since uh, for 19 years now. Oh, <laughs> Not so active in the last six years, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how time flies. Yeah, that's good stuff. I'm going to add to that fun fact. And when we were putting this panel together, we realized that Melinda and I went to college together at the same time and didn't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> so we were kind of reminiscing going, did you have this class with this person? And kind of trying to figure out, like, I'm fairly certain we had at least a couple classes together, but <clears throat> that was, Small that was world. when dinosaurs roamed. So, you know. It <laughs> um, all right, Jean, talk to me. Hi, um, I'm Moiti Jean, and uh, I've been around in some capacity since like uh basically the ribbon list um which i didn't stick around for terribly long because uh, it got completely overwhelming with the messages <laughs> but um yeah i uh i live in the pacific northwest i've been here pretty much all my life and um i enjoy the entire mist aesthetic and uh my work has been described by certain people as time consuming but oh so tidy and i really appreciate it <laughs> put it on your business card i love that eva hello, hello. my dear hello uh, i'm eva <clears throat> i'm from italy um uh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, i like isha as someone may have noticed sure uh, yep uh, okay <laughs> awesome riam where's riam Ram, are you joining? Oh, what's what are you doing? Uh, hello, great to see you there. <laughs> Swear to so God. I'm here for, uh, <laughs> for my name, and I thought I'd do this presentation, you know, in Dunny. So I'm from Brisbane, Australia, and a uh, fun fact about me is I own a DeLorean, the car from Back to the Future. That does not shock me in the lightest. <laughs> awesome. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> okay, closer. This computer closer to him. I love it. <laughs> I can actually see me. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't go. I'm Kelly <laughs> or Rain or whatever. I live in Portland, Oregon, and um, I. <sighs> Let's see, I've been making mist art for, well, it's apart from doodles, mist art for, since its inception, but like more kind of diving into more art um, last couple of years. It's relatively recent because I was always intimidated or shy about it or I don't know, something. So fun fact about me, that's my backyard. <laughs> that's a good fact. We live in the channel at house and that's kind of awesome. <laughs> so um <laughs> it's really cool. Um, okay, so if we want to go ahead and dive into to, to our art, so we have a lovely slideshow presentation for you guys that uh, showcases everyone's art. It's going to be very lovely. In the meantime, I hope everyone's enjoying Mysterium and having a fabulous weekend. 
since we can't all see each other's shining faces in DC, but are we're you, seeing each other's shining faces here. So, you know. Are you bringing it up or did you want me to? Go ahead and run the slides. Oh, am I? Okay. I'm sorry. I can. That's okay. On, my, <laughs> on the slide machine. Uh, let me just open and share screen. Communication challenges. Sorry. <laughs> we had a lot of time to practice, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> Bear with us, everybody. Share screen. Look, we just wanted to show as much art as it was humanly yeah. possible. Right. Go and there we go. Oh, yeah. you there. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> the end. Ignore the spoilers. There we go. We've crafted a yeah. whole elaborate narrative. <laughs> <laughs> narrative being cram as much art onto the screen as we can possibly fit. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Very true. All right. Oh, I get to go first. Goody. So let's see. Um, I guess we'll start by just kind of briefly talking about what we're seeing. This was a digital painting I did for Mysterium last year. It was printed as a vinyl banner that we then hung. That's and great. then it got really fun to use as like a photo backdrop. And so I'm going to expand on that and make it wider so that it's uh, a larger piece. But it is quite detailed. Um, and I took some... <laughs> There's nuts to abduction, obviously. You don't see a book with a, on a pedestal in, in mist right there, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but then, like, all of the books in the library, if you zoom way in, which you can kind of see it, there's names on each spine. And I was working with other folks in the community to, like, put a lot of thought into the colors that matched each age. <laughs> like, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. Um, so... Yeah, this was this was a lot of fun. I I really enjoyed this, and I want to I want to widen it so that we have a larger like probably fabric backdrop for next year or something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, my two thirty three painting. Um, <laughs> this was acrylic on canvas. Uh, I think the dimensions are eighteen inches by thirty six inches, and. Um, in a couple of hours, it's I actually recorded this, and in a couple of hours, it's going to be streamed on one of the red streams on YouTube. Um, sped up to about a half an hour because the total time was about four hours to paint this guy and then it was accidentally destroyed so <laughs> um but yeah i was i was very i was I, I i'm very attached to that scene i like it a lot so i've, I've painted it a few times gene it's your turn oh wow okay talk um, about your this is, this is some gorgeous cosplay talk to me about your process like what's what's going on here um well shoot um i think like Catherine was probably one of the I like I've loved costumes like my whole life since I was mm -hmm. a little kid but I think Catherine was probably the first like cosplay thing that I did okay um like before I even had a sewing machine didn't really even know how to sew um I like made a duct tape double and I made that vest like by hand um got a sewing machine to do the rest but like basically um Miss has just kind of been an inspiration for me for a long time. I've touched on it in like almost every medium that I've tried, mm -hmm. um, just because I love recreating those um, those objects and elements and and that style, even if it's not you know directly recreated. But um, sure. and like I I'm a huge sucker for detail and getting in close and like making things that reward you for looking closer and closer at them. Yeah, um, so and all of that. Yeah, I thank you for mentioning. <laughs> I, like, I didn't even think to say that. Like, yeah, all that red fabric is—it was plain fabric when I got it, and it's all completely hand embroidered. Um, I figured out. I made a little tool to figure out how to do that, um, and I went to Cyan at one point just on a trip to visit, and like took as many pictures of the costume as I could to try to figure out the pattern of like floral vines on that fabric, uh, which was hugely challenging because it's all the in folds and stuff, you can't see it. Um, so I just kind of did my best. And then I was able to, um, after I received an incredibly beautiful, uh, it was a birthday gift, I think years ago from Claire, um, that was a drawing, an illustration of like a character for me like my stranger character who I hadn't really envisioned before in Riven. Um, and I was able to do a costume of that and draw on what I learned from making Catherine 
to do that costume. Um, and you'll see her art later. Um, it's gorgeous. You put a lot of detail into that. Thank you. And these, Jiminy Christmas. Um, so yeah, I like I do all kinds of stuff. I I just uh, on the left there, I tried stained glass for the first time. My in-laws have um, a little stained glass studio in their basement. So I uh, brought that to bear on recreating a piece from Uru that I really, really love. Um, the piece in the middle was a entry for an Uru um, stained glass piece to be included in the game uh, oh, as part wow. of the living room. And mine was one of the pieces that got in. So you can go into Uru still and find that stained glass in like randomly in certain neighborhoods, oh, which was okay. just like hugely significant so cool. to me because I'm, I'm like, I have a thing with Uru. Um, the pieces on the right are my Great Zero or Crystal Machine jewelry series mm -hmm. where I iterated and reiterated on the Great Zero machine in Uru, just taking inspiration from that, um, that sort of false uh, electrical crystal kind of theme. Um, there's a lot of fun things you can do with tiny, tiny wire wrapping, but most of those pieces are like this big or smaller, super finite. Um, I done a Denny bead curtain really early on, just, I don't know, um, a super tiny little um, beetle inkwell recreation that's maybe an inch tall. I love doing miniature things. Wow, and, uh, that's intricate. Like, sculpture, um, just like Every medium that I can try to do some kind of mist thing, and I'll probably do it at some point. <laughs> uh, I do do other things and other fandoms, but we're here for mist stuff, so I'm glad I've got a bunch of that to show you guys. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. I think that's all. Yay! Yay. Melinda! <laughs> Gee, um, I wonder where you got your ideas from. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> apologies for the early 2000s photoshops here but they're all I kind of have of a lot of this stuff right now On memories yeah memories I'm sure the costumes are somewhere packed away in storage units um I did find my old journey claw and my old relation book <laughs> which is fun um but yeah so these are costumes that I made in high school um during prime Uru and missed three times. So the first one that I made was uh, that Savidra costume. And I made it for me um, because my hair has always been this crazy. <laughs> uh, and it just, it reminded me so much of Savidra's hair. I was like, well, that's the easy one. I don't have to get a wig. Where would I find a wig? I can, <laughs> but I can make costumes. So I made uh, a Savidra costume. And um, later on, a, a boyfriend of mine let me dress him up uh, very nicely in it. Um, and then I did a Yisha costume. So like that collar is all hand beaded. Um, all the tattoos. Yeah, it was a labor of love. Not work. As, uh, as Laughing Pineapple will also attest. <laughs> it's a crazy costume. Um, and then I also made a uh, an Uru avatar costume to wear to um, Mysterium Philadelphia. Was it Philadelphia? They hadn't quite announced Uru yet. So I was I was closet cosplaying and only the other people in, who had been in the closed beta knew that I was even in costume at all. Other people probably just thought I was dressing weird for Mysterium, which is <laughs> the thing it. that I do. So. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then they went and changed the avatar. I'm not even sure if that skin is in the game anymore by the time <laughs> it released, but that's what you get. Um, oh, this oh, I forgot about the backpacks, yeah. Yeah, they had backpacks. Um, so in high Always school, saw I this also one. did <laughs> ceramic. Yep. Um, it's kind of embarrassing now, but you know, the love and the thought was there. Um, and now I'm a 3D sculptor. So uh, I modeled Riven, uh, the Gens Crest um, in ZBrush and 3D printed it and painted it for my latest Mist cosplay, which was a Gen costume that I, I did love it. years ago. So this one, I hand dyed all the fabric. Um, I sourced all of those badges up the front, all of the uh, the gold work, embroidery work, um, the original goggles, well, copies of it, but the same model. Um, Jean helped me paint those shoes. She's yeah. <laughs> her airbrush. Um, and uh, the thing that started the costume is that that's an original museum replica 
uh, gem gun that I got my hands on, and I figured, well, if I've got this, I need the whole rest of the outfit. To go with <laughs> yeah. <it. All> right. <laughs> So, yeah. It's amazing. Right. Yay, Shumi. Hi. Um, so as I explained earlier, I'm, I'm a concept artist in video games and a lot of why I got into games was because of my love of Myst as a young kid. Um, I think what people know me for probably, probably the most, at least my most visible work is I've done a bunch of the Mysterium t-shirt designs. I think three of them are missing from this sheet. So I fit as many as I could. Um, but it's always such a fun challenge each year, especially with the different themes and locations to try and integrate it all together, um, including doing this year's shirt design as well as kind of next year's shirt design. Because not of kind of, it's next year's shirt design. <laughs> there we go. Just <laughs> knock two years out of the park with half the work. It's great. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is something I really enjoy doing, especially since I do posters for Mondo and other companies on the side. So it's fun to use that screen printing knowledge. Next slide. <clears throat> um, and so I'm a concept artist during, during the day, concept artist and art director. And so I spend a lot of my free time playing around with the Mist universes and expanding on them, trying to figure out what Rivenese culture would look like beyond what you see in the game or what it would look like during the book of Atris. Um, and in the middle are two portraits that I've done of friends of Jean and my, my, another buddy of mine, Jake, in various Mist related garb, which was super fun. And then eventually that culminated in getting to do character concepts for abduction, which was super fun, so. Um, and another thing I do <clears throat> that I started doing when I was in high school with my Mist 3 journal um, was I started keeping a journal while playing the games and my Mist 3 journal is all just, well, you can't see it because my background. <laughs> um, it's all in pencil and it's pretty ugly, but once missed four, five, and when I finally played Uru rolled around, I got to do them all in dip pen. And so these are my like actual notes playing the game. You see me trying to figure out puzzles and getting them wrong <laughs> constantly throughout these notes, but drawing out diagrams and doing essentially like plein air studies of the things in the game has just been a really fun way for me to engage with the series in a very one-to-one -one in universe kind of way, so. This yeah. has actually been inspiring to me when I play games. Just, oh, just cool. so you know that. <laughs> oh, Riem, Whoa. the mist, the the mist book aficionado. The mist book. So the mist book. The book that Cy and themselves ended up scanning and using as the texture reference in Real Mist Masterpiece Edition because their one was not so good quality. Yep. Uh, basically, I built a computer inside a book, but that kind of completely underestimates just was involved to make that happen. Um, so the best example I can give you is um, at the time, the smallest computer was Apple's Mac mini at 17 centimeters. This computer was 12 centimeters and I included the battery, the power supply and the screen inside there as well. So it um, personally held the record for 18 months, 16, 18 months of the smallest, fastest computer and a certain power envelope because even though it was so tiny, it had enough grunt in it to run Half-Life 2 at 30 frames a second. So it was featured by all sorts of places like um, Smithsonian Institute featured it. Um, basically, almost every tech blog um, on the internet featured it. Um, it. This one just went crazy on the internet. Literal um, two and a half terabytes in one month of data transfer on my website just from everyone linking to it. Mm -hmm. um, if you were at Mysterium 2012 or 2014, you would have seen that one where I presented it there and unveiled it. Um, and I made it out of a copy of the same 100 and, well, what is it now? 144-year-old, um, I think, um, book that Cyan used the original one. I managed to track down another one. And I even managed to track down um, pages to go with it. So I had like the white page and the blue page. <laughs> um, that were, um, I didn't dye them. Those are originals from, you know, um, additional copies of the book that I managed to find. Wow. And there may or may not be a reference to this in Abduction. <clears throat> yeah, it's in Abduction. Oh yeah, and also it plays all the Mist games from the original all the way through to Mist 5. So this one's the most recent one I've done. It's um, a Dunny Clock or a Chronometer, which I presented at last year's Mysterium. Um, basically, um, you get the standard electronic seven segment displays at the top, um, but below it on the bottom, um, I made electronic digital dunny 
um, 25 segment displays. Um, um, those were from the circuit boards from scratch um, or something like that. But the most important thing about that is that I couldn't find any reference of anyone online actually making their own seven segment display equivalents. Um, so um, certain tech blogs and the tech community picks that one up quite a lot because I documented everything on my on the presentation on how to make it. Um, and no one had seen anyone make anything like that. And I provided enough information on how to all make it um, yourself. It's not as difficult to make from yourself. The top uh, right are examples of the circuit boards. Um, the one in the middle was done automatically, as in you um, um, auto router just created those lines for me. So I didn't. I started with the one on the right, where I just put the LEDs and said, "This is connected to this. This is connected to that." Um, click the auto route button, and it automatically routes all those traces for you. Uh, that was through Easy EDA, which is done in a web browser as well. So you don't need any specific software. It's not really complicated. It's all designed to be relatively easy. So uh, theoretically, um, anyone else could replicate that or use the same idea to create um, their own different um, custom display. That's great. So oh, this pretty. This one's the other clock. So yeah, there's a running joke that I'm a time traveler because you know DeLorean and everything like that. So I, I sometimes I build clocks, but I build weird ones. This is a fully mechanical uh, Dunny clock. Um, it was presented Mysterium 2009, I think it was. Um, it's all made out of um, laser cut gears. Um, uh, one impressive part for that is that I designed a lot of that clock on a Pentium 166 back in the day, but they're never wow. actually making it. So um, yeah, it was um, you know a tiny thing with I think 16 megabytes of RAM that I was designing very old fashioned in CAD software. And then many, many years later, I'm like, you know what? I've got that old design. I should actually, you know, make it. Um, so, and on the right is a, um, a Riven Dagger crystal key ring. If you remember those little crystal dot things that were mm -hmm. super popular, like in the late 90s. Um, yeah, so I made a bunch of them on the um, Riven Dagger. That was well before there was any model of the Riven Dagger available. Um, like um, you couldn't extract out a mist five like you can these days if you're being cheeky. So I had to make that from scratch. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it turned out pretty well. It looks great. Eva. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I make things, so costumes here. Uh, <clears throat> I've been a cosplayer for years. <clears throat> Apologies for my voice. It's just like this. And um, uh, the first thing I did when I played the Mist games was, okay, I have to, to, to dress up as these characters because I love the Mist designs. They are so unique. The, uh, the, the choice of, of textures, of patterns in, uh, in Euro and Mist 5 especially is so great. I had to recreate that. Like all the, um, the fabrics for Isha, both issues. Um, they were so much fun to work with. The all the, the patterns I painted on the end of ages design are all texture are great, and it's just so physical. Like coming from mostly JRPG designs, which are so I don't know things happen with those clothes. You don't even know how they're supposed to exist in the real world. And that's the challenge as a cosplayer. Like you see these things and you have to make them real. But mm -hmm. um, these costumes uh, have this sense of, okay, these could be real. And okay, for, for the old games, they are real, they're real actors, but I mostly went from from an explorer onwards. Uh, yeah, so the, that's a great challenge as a cosplayer. And um, when I went as Dr. Watson, um, I kept having people ask me who I was dressed as, what, what game I was dressed as, as what, what thing. And I literally had mist written on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody took a hint, but OK. <laughs> So there's um, there's also Rand photobombing the, the photo with <laughs> with Asher 
Mm, that's a fun pick. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice him back there. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> the band uh, is amazing. amazing. Uh, yeah, the, the central pick with the, with the tree was in Trieste, uh, where I studied in university, and they had these, this perfect little public park, mm -hmm. uh, which was just the garden age. So oh, yeah. I had a nice photo shoot there. And yes, the others are from the studio with my friends. Have you all. <laughs> okay. Great pictures. I love those. That was yes. a fun year. There's, there's that was my first Mysterium that year. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> oh, then your I art's dresses. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it's fun in fan art and even in cosplay, but in cosplay you have to be at Mysterium, and that's a bit far from me from Italy. Sure. Uh, in fan <laughs> art, you can just take characters and, you know, put them together in the same screen, which is something they don't do in these games, mostly. <laughs> so you, you can have them interact some, somehow. And I don't know, that's cool. Uh, for example, I like to think of Isha and Atreus reconnecting after Miss Five. And oh. I can't just draw that, you know. I love that. Yeah, uh, really cute. Or, I don't know, uh, an abduction crossover. Um, there's the whole uh, tree thing in both games in the room mm -hmm. and abduction. So, you know, have the grower and the abduction trees in the same picture. Or, yeah, I like I it. Know. I like it. And assorted prop making. Um, I have done a few shirts for Mysterio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. So to see a few people <laughs> wear them today has been so I don't know it's so many fun memories of the Mysteria I've been able to attend and also I have um, a much less ambitious um, Miss book which was powered by a PlayStation Portable back in the day. Oh, okay. the, yeah, it runs Mist PlayStation. PSP missed. Yeah. And um, stuff. The swing in that place. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really sweet. Um, I think it's fun. The, the Savitra plushie, I don't know how it <laughs> came together because I didn't know what I was doing when I started that, but it just worked somehow. <laughs> and scary. it was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, Keith. Hello, that's me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been doing fan art for, well, yeah, years. Um, and then when Uru came around, that kind of changed everything for me, really. Because mm -hmm. um, then I started focusing more on age building um, and then kind of developing a story within the confines of what sign have already established um, with well, both iterations of Uru and Mist 5. Um, yeah, so um, doing the um, regular kind of fan arts, kind of, I find it kind of easier to do because there's already like established elements to it. So when I was doing the, the grower piece, I already knew what Isha looked like at that point. So it's kind of just working with that and making it something else, I guess, a different mm -hmm. pose, different kind of atmosphere to it. Um, with the other two pieces, um, well, one of them's some ideas that I had for an age that um, didn't really happen. And then the other one is, um, it's actually my grandfather. Um, I oh, really? Nice. Homage oh, to great. him in the game. So um, when I needed to do a portrait of uh, Fenier, I thought, well, I'm making my grandfather. So. Sure. Your work is so atmospheric. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, this, uh, moved on to age building. Um, spent years building, rebuilding, rebuilding again. Um, don't think I've actually released anything in 10 years, which is probably driving a lot of people bar me. But, um, <laughs> well, I think a lot of us in this panel can relate to that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yep. It's it's given me time to kind of hone my I, I 
the early stuff I built wasn't up to scratch for me. I wanted my stuff to be good enough to look, you know, to be aside Siam's ages and there to be very little kind of difference between them. Um, so I've, that's kind of what I've been doing over the last 10 years is just rebuilding, trying to get myself better, you know, modeling and texturing and lighting and the atmosphere and stuff. Um, so when they do happen, it fits. Um, yeah, um, these are just various bits and bobs for, um, I like the world building aspect, definitely, um, especially with my own ages. Um, I like developing the landmass, the maps, the cultures, the languages, um, that aspect of it is just really interesting to me. So <laughs> being able to load up Photoshop and kind of transfer that um, is quite an enjoyable process. I have a quick question. What's going on with the hand on, on the on the gem there? Is that like a stylized version of the of yeah. Lisha's hand? Okay. Just kind yeah. of a... It was, um, it was, that came from an old idea I had with like a... Um, I was playing around with an idea for a race of people that use the arts, um, but not in a scholarly way, but in the kind of, um, they used it for warfare and to... Interesting. Um, so this would have been the Lin fist Harmy's of Jimmy, kind of yeah. a... <laughs> um, so this character kind of went and partook in that kind of city and learned new things about aid writing and stuff. But yeah, that kind of got scrapped in the end. For, yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. <clears throat> what are these ages called? Do you have names for these guys? Yeah, so um, the first age I did was called Fats because first. Um, okay. Yeah, the, um, there's Cass, which is um, like a museum age, which kind of chronicles the old restoration and our time in Dini. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, the one with the crystals is called Keran, um, which I made for a friend of mine. It's um, beautiful. I like that one. Yeah. There's, I've, I've got like eight, nine ages that I'm working on, <laughs> and I just rotate through them all. So, sure. yeah. Yeah, no, I like it. That's good stuff. Like hey, look, we're back right at the now. beginning. All right. So, while I'm waiting for our attendees to bring me the red questions, I mean the blue questions. Um, <laughs> I have some of our own questions that we'll get started with. So um, what's it like playing in Cyan Sandbox? And I guess we'll just kind of, whoever wants to jump in can, can jump in with an ooh, pick me kind of thing. They are super generous. Yeah. Cyan has been so <laughs> kind to us as fan artists by not coming down on us for like borrowing their IP or iterating yeah. on it because they're so excited to see what we make. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really kind and i think it's really cemented our relationship with them and and how much we want them to continue trusting us mm -hmm. um i think they've even like considered collaborations with people for like making merch and stuff in yeah. the future but i don't personally know any actual things about that but it's just it's a cool thing i do <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> I do feel like the fact that that Mist is this very meta franchise that writing is very akin to level building and making video games and coding. Mm -hmm. um, I think it really encourages the fans to engage with it in that sort of creative and transformative way to make your own ages. Like the moment I played Mist and Riven as a kid, I immediately started being like, well, what if there is an age where I was the terrible despot <laughs> that ruled it instead of Gen, I guess. Um, but it's such a fun, as you said, sandbox to play around in and just experiment with and expand upon. It just has it built into the fibers of its very being. Yeah. yeah. For me, um, speaking mostly as a fan fiction writer now, um, you have all these um, very peculiar characters and you get to know each of them through their diaries, their journals, the, you see traces of what they do, of what they write, um, mm -hmm. and, and they never meet. So it's very easy and very engaging to think of how they would interact if they got a chance to do that. Like um, last Yuletide I wrote about um, 
with all the Isha, going back in time, because that's a thing you can do without repercussions, as everyone knows, um, to, to talk to Akinar and to reconnect with her brother. And so, um, I don't know, it's, it's unique because you have, again, all these characters with all their history, histories, and um, even lots of characters who lived in the knee right before it fell. And you know, they were all there. There was Atreus, there was Anna, there was Asher, uh, there was Callum, plenty of people. And you can just imagine how, how it would go, what, what they would do together. What, what does Asher think of the, of the grower of Kadish uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really like how it melds a lot of styles. You know, we've got like neoclassical architecture with more like culturally tribal stuff with, um, you know, military stuff for Gen. Like part of Gen's costume actually repurposes like Russian naval hat badges. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so just like all of these elements, uh, all of these disparate elements coming together to form this one really interesting um, you know, pre-steampunk, before there was steampunk, steampunk, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of aesthetic. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit of steampunk, a little bit of, um, that's what I'm looking for, uh, sur surrealism, which is- Oh, absolutely. I love surrealism, so it's yeah. it's really fascinating to me. Yeah, it's a huge wellspring of ideas to draw from and iterate on. Yeah. And then recognize in the real world where they got their inspirations from, and then you get more inspired by those things. Mm-hmm. Each game has its own sort of like flavor, too. Yeah, yeah. That it's absolutely. Yeah, everybody's got like a favorite kind of style and place within them, or like all the fans do anyway, within the Mist universe. That, mm -hmm. That's really fun to kind of talk about those things and find your common styles. Yeah, no, I like that. Whatever your mood is, there's pretty much always something that you can use as inspiration somewhere in one of the games. Somewhere. Right. No, that's absolutely true. Shumi, this is a question for you. Uh, <laughs> when can one purchase a copy of See You on the Other Side? Uh, I answered it in the chat. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a private commission for my buddy Jake. And so I think it would just depend on if Jake is open to people owning portraits of him on their wall. Got it. That's <laughs> Which he very much might be. That's um, the, the linking illustration that you did? Yes, he's linking. I love that piece. Book. We met at at Mysterium 2007 in LA and oh, he goes yeah. by Purple Penguin. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice. So nice. Lots of lifelong friends from this community. <laughs> oh yeah. I hear that one. Uh Riam, this is a question for you. Yeah. Uh let me find it. Um talk a little bit about oh uh somebody had to ask if your clock not the Denis clock but the the red the older round clock that you did was on hackaday um from what i remember back then hackaday wasn't really a thing um um i could be wrong but it could be okay. pre-hackaday so no it was never featured on hackaday um it was featured on a few clock based um things back in the day okay um, but yeah, so I don't think that one didn't get anywhere near the publicity of some of my other ones. Um, just I think because Linking of the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned, but it actually you actually calculated out all those gears to actually time it via Denis time and not like oh yeah Earth so surface that, time. That does entirely all its calculations in Denis time, like the pendulum at the top bottom swings once per dunny seconds so at 1.4 seconds or whatever it may be uh, there is no surface time anywhere involved in any of that and it turns out when you're doing clocks like that there's only so many ways that you can build a clock for our surface time system mm -hmm. so around 300 years ago or so um someone sat down and wrote down the tables of all the possible ways that you might need to build a clock to make our surface time system, whether it's a big wow. clock or a little pocket watch. So you can just follow the table of those numbers to build whatever kind of clock you might want. Problem is, that's all for our surface time, and they didn't actually write down where the British Horological Institute actually got those numbers from or how they created them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had to create those numbers from scratch. Um, 
from memory, I used partial inspiration for a bit of it um, from attempts that some people had done to try and modify surface clocks to work on Mars and the different time system on different planets if you were to build clocks on them. Um, uh, but using that, I reverse engineered all the numbers that I needed to make that thing actually work. Wow, that's amazing. Melinda, this is a question for you. Do you have your journey class to hold up to the camera and show it in nice oh, Sure, yeah, it's right down here. I have a surplus of monitors right now, but um, <laughs> lovely. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so good. It's cool. Yes. It's so beautiful. The one part of the Yisha costume that I know where it's located. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I brought this to one of, I brought this to a Mysterium like right when Uru was released or so, and I was placing it all over Mysterium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody was very excited. Yeah, I was I was tempted to make one, um, obviously not nearly as fancy as that because I'm relatively novice with fabrics, but um, and then like hide it on the on the treehouse. Yeah, so burlap. Burlap and marker. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, maybe next time, but yeah, didn't have a chance to didn't didn't have a chance for this one. But uh, Eva, this question is for you. Um, how long did it take you to make that Yisha uh, shell amulet? And do you have it to hold up to the camera close up? The, the Yisha what? The, the shell amulet. Oh, you're wearing it. <laughs> how long did it take you to make that? And can you hold it up to the camera? Oh, this was, um, I think, two days. It's really quite simple. It's a real shell. Mm -hmm. And you, I painted the shell. Added this this fake gem in, made with modeling paste, mm -hmm. and then this is what's it called? I don't know the English term. The thing you put on the hem of oh, binding. binding, binding, binding tape. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to find something that could pass for um, for gold, mm -hmm. uh, gold finishing, yeah. and then I painted it. It's it's beautiful. It's very like convincing. It. This yeah. is the ingenuity of cosplay. Yeah, yeah seriously. Which I ties guess. right into the ingenuity of puzzle solving and mist. You're looking for ways to solve a problem. There it is. Absolutely. That is absolutely true. So this is for the- your life skills. Right. <laughs> uh, this is for the whole panel. Um, has anyone ever done any fan art of unseen ages such as Everdunes? Yes. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I've not shared any of it, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely like drawn stuff in Photoshop based on concept pieces for Uri, but never made it into mm -hmm. ages. Okay. Um, but I haven't <laughs> thought it was good enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, it's not polished enough to share with anyone, but it exists. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, five or ten years go by and you look at it and you're like, hug <laughs> 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 at the old collar. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was working on Rebec for a while. Does that count? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Right. <laughs> um, okay. I don't know if this even counts once. Um, I did some models for Uru that never made it into the actual game during one of my internships. So Ooh, it's the purest out. version of that. Yeah, I, I don't know <laughs> if it counts. As <laughs> they weren't paying me during the internship. <laughs> but it was that's a great experience. Yeah, but those are out there somewhere. That counts. Yeah. Um, One of them's from Negaland, isn't it? I'm sure. I have no idea. They were like, you know, creatures, um, a lot of creature models, so. Hmm. Um, so this is a question for the cosplayers from Odo. Um, what is it like to fill in the gaps of the details that are not ad adequately represented in the objects that you're trying to recreate? So. I hear that one Star X Mans all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, so when you have just tiny images and you're having trouble trying to figure out what is that thing and how can I make it fancy? For a perfectionist, it's excruciating. <laughs> it's, the it's the worst. Oh, I think it's really gratifying. The uh, the original belt buckle on Gen. Oh, it looks like the garbage. one at Cyan. <laughs> it's just a lump of sculpty. It's nice. Like a gold yeah. painted lump of sculpty with a giant like screw in the center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bolt in the center. It looks nothing like what your imagination would, would want it to look like. So I, I take great pride that my costume 
has you know a beautifully finished like it's what i would want the costume to look like it's yeah what yeah like once you eye. once and we've done too. the work to fill in the gaps we can feel super proud of it right but the work of filling in the gaps is really hard sometimes <laughs> yeah a lot of time but yeah. it's cool to have that freedom to actually fill in a gap sometimes because trying to exactly match a reference is also excruciating right <laughs> yeah. i remember yes, I, when i was making yisha her front roadrunner decal yeah. i got halfway through cutting out that like tracing it out and cutting it out and a and like hand sewing it on before I realized it was a roadrunner. I had no idea. <laughs> it was like an abstract <laughs> shape. <laughs> yeah, it was like an abstract distorted hand yeah. shape. Oh, it's a desert for bird. like half of the construction process. Sometimes yeah, you make those connections and your brain just goes, oh. <laughs> Sorry, you guys talk over you. No, um, I mean, it's good when you know you can just fill in the detail however you want more or less but sometimes you don't know if that tiny blur texture is meant it should mean something or not uh you should boots <laughs> yeah what are these those boots? Little thingies <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. these, i think are like not the boots <laughs> with it. They're like I don't know. greaves or something right yeah i i just <laughs> wore socks and then put some kind of i don't know but <laughs> yellow dots above <laughs> on, on the, yeah. the, the higher part of the boot what are those are those symbols are those squares i don't know are those barrow symbols who knows? Yeah. So no, you know, wait a minute. I, I ended up sewing those those shin things to the pants. Yeah. So <laughs> the problem in all cosplay and not just mist. Always yeah. oh, trying to interpret. Even, how how are you even supposed to get into that armor? Uh-huh. Like it connects on the underside of the uh, and the shoulder pads. It makes yes. Yeah, so I ended up doing a zipper up the funny. back. But. <laughs> I think this comes up a lot in actual, in making video games too, when you're working on older franchises. So when they're making real Mist or when you're bringing things from Mist into Riven or working on Half-Life Alex at Valve, where you're just trying to figure out what the intentions of the original creator were and are trying to expand on it and improve on it as best as you can. Like if they had the ability to make this to the best of their abilities in the same way that Melinda like up the belt to what it was supposed to be instead of being- yeah four pixels tall in a video game from the 90s <laughs> and it's a really fun challenge and it's guaranteed that some people are going to disagree with your choices but I kind of like that it opens it up that no cosplays are the same because people are imbuing them with like their own choices and their own preferences right. is really interesting it's kind of the fun part about taking some artistic liberty with a yeah. piece of like no, I actually think it, it should be this way or something like that. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're taking the, some of the pieces of it and might maybe changing it just a, just a little bit. I like that. There are like, also... so many different versions of things too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Mike will know there are so many different versions of the Mist book. Like, which is the Mist book? You could talk about that for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to whole... touch on that, um, yeah. the font, Mist. You'd think that Psy would have that knocked down, you know, just even say just for the game Mist as well, you know, not sequels where they might have changed it, but just for the game Mist, the original game, just that font for the main logo, which, you know, logos you tend to keep consistent. I think I tracked seven or eight different fonts that they use just for that one. Um, <laughs> one so there's no consistency, even within Psy and themselves, even just within one game even just within the confines of the logo of a single word. Consistency is hard, y'all. <laughs> but the cool thing is that you can get really deeply connected to the piece that you're working on. You can connect, like, you may never meet them or talk to them in your life, but you can connect, like, mentally to the person who designed the original pieces in a really, like, like deep and meaningful way to you to imagine like what it was like for them to create that originally um, yeah. and to develop that. And it makes it so much more important to you because you've spent all that time on it now and examining it and getting to know it lovingly and like. Yeah, 
I hope all of the uh, developers to, like tiny um, detail. I hope the developers that we've had on panels for Mist three and four, you know, take a look and see. I don't know if they're even aware of any of the fan art that's been made for their games, but I hope that I hope that now they are. <laughs> I hope yeah. so. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the that's... shirt this year is is technically Mist four stuff, so yeah. But to all of those creators of all the missed games, everybody who has worked on this stuff that we're just like running with right now, a very deep thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. From, wonderful I think from every everybody here. Yeah, that's that's kind of goes without saying. Yeah. Um so this is kind of a fun one. Do you, the panel at large, do we have any advice for uh budding artists? who might be new to making fan art. Try everything. Uh, just <laughs> try. Try. Um, Start somewhere. Yeah. Take the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think this is a, a relatively small community and very welcoming and interested in seeing fan works. So just try and we'll be glad to see them. Mm -hmm. see what do you want to do and i think just like drawing what you're passionate about like the point mm -hmm. of fan art it is, is that it is for you it is an expression of your love for a property yeah and it can often just expand your own your own career and your own interest just by doing it and it's so easy with social media to get caught up in like what people are expecting to see or what you think people want to see but just do it for I yourself i think you just saw into my soul <laughs> <laughs> It's a real problem. So just trust that if you draw what you love, especially in a community, as Ava was saying, that's so just so small and so welcoming and so excited about any new fan art that's brought to the table. It's, mm -hmm. it's really a great place to be. Yeah. And if drawing frustrates you like it does me, try a different medium. There's like <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Play around with different mediums. Express yourself artistically. Yeah, that's fair. Fabric, uh, clay, uh, whatever. <laughs> Oh, it gives you the opportunity to experiment a bit and, you know, not getting it right at first, just don't let that get you down. Just It's just perseverance. I mean, you only have to look at Claire's work um, and seeing how much she's grown over the years from the drawings that um, the Isha Waffle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the Isha Waffle Iron that oh, she posted on Miss Community, iron. yeah. And now working, uh, you know, in the industry and worked on Bioshock and all this lots. And it's just, mm -hmm. the, oh, it just, I just wanted to say I did hide a Riven Easter egg in Half-Life Alex. So yes, oh, oh, thank you. I would expect nothing less. That's excellent <laughs> news. That's excellent news. Um, has, one piece oh no, Riam, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if I had one piece of advice is I, touched on this actually in my presentation at Mysterium last year, um, is that failure is important. Um, mm -hmm. Don't just, you know, um, expect to fail because, you know, you're not going to get everything perfect. So don't just expect to fail, outright plan to fail because mm -hmm. it is going to happen no matter what you do. Failure is the quickest way to learn. You learn more from your failures than you do your successes. So sure. literally jump in have a go, do what you can. And in fact, actually, I have here um, one of my first pieces of <laughs> fan art. This is a linking book that I made back in primary school, I think it it's was. It's perfect. Um, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Those things that I made from scratch, you know, I tea stained the pages and wrote in them um, with the calligraphy pen or whatever else. This is pretty crap, to be honest. You know, <laughs> this is, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's crap. It's beautiful. <laughs> but you don't get somewhere better without getting through somewhere like this. And so the quicker right. you can get through this, the quicker you can accept that this may not be the best. And it turns out I'm not good at this. Um, I'll give you a secret. Um, I'm actually really bad with fine motor skills with my hands. And that's partly why this is so bad. Um, so if I just give you a test to show like that, if I put my hand up there and try and hold it still, you see how much shake I have in my hands. Um, but there's ways that to that. Um, you can get around that, you know, um, different techniques, different, entirely different mediums of creating things as well, um, depending upon what you need. Um, like uh, the circuit boards that I used, the LEDs that I put on them were 0603 LEDs is the code for that, 
which is 0.06 inches by 0.03 inches. And they've got a very accurately sub millimeter. Um, but there's techniques and ways to get around that. And that's beyond the scope of just this talk here. Um, but don't let anything hold you back. Don't let any limitations you might have hold you back and literally plan to fail. And the quicker you can get through the beginning stuff, the quicker you can get through to the um, further on stuff. Yeah, yeah, building on that, I find a blank page. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this in a missed thing, but like I find <laughs> blank pages to be terrifying. So often when I'm starting, you know, I'll just like make marks or scribble or start pinning fabric uh, to the dress form. And I'll just know whatever I make in that first day or, you know, depending on how long, like whatever I make at first, I'm going to throw out. Like it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just there to get me past that blank slate phase and through to where I start setting down um, like markers where I can tell mm -hmm. what the form is. So, okay. as long there as we like, start. <laughs> and we're like, we're just a tiny little set of the fan artists in this community. There oh, are so sure. many people yes. making amazing yeah. things. Like so go many. and look for them, like look at their stuff and then think about what is missing for you. Like, what do you, what do you really want to see? What voids uh, do you want to fill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, uh -huh. then, then you have a goal to work toward. Um, and you can study the various like disciplines that you might need to try in order to, to get that thing made. And people will be really happy to see it because they, it's been missing from the fan art collection. Yeah. 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 And there's never been a, new, a better sure. time to try and pick up a new skill. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. To distract you yourself from the world. When I was making a lot of these costumes. Wow. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. At first. But you guys have inspired me to fulfill my dreams in uh, making bread rolls in the shape of Atris's face. Yes. That's excellent. <laughs> Do we you need to post pictures? Want. Please? Yes. This is little this scarab is shaped bread. Make and share. Yes. Yeah. Make and share. Like, like mail. <laughs> Well, well, I'll post our mailing addresses and you can just kind of drop some right. of the interesting pages low publicly <laughs> in Twitch. <laughs> oh my gracious. Uh, well, we're about out of time, but I want to, uh, I think, close with one final question that I hope we can kind of answer quickly is uh, what is your favorite missed game to draw inspiration from? Because oh, I know nice. we each have kind of our own little. <laughs> I mean, I went by Riven Chan. Like one of a few of my emails are still Riven Jam. So I have to say Riven. Yeah. I'm still Moiety Jean. Right. Since like 1998. <laughs> uh, it has to be Uru Absolutely. just for the sheer yeah. amount of age building that I've been doing for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Riven and Uru were definitely the most visually inspirational for me. I think because I placed myself into those games the most out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, like I felt like I was there and I wanted to have that world like as kind of part of my existence so that's been a real drive for me making all these different things over the years. Oh, I love it. Yeah um, for me the, the expanded scope of Uru just took my breath away mm -hmm. and yeah that, that's where my heart is. Yeah I like Uru a lot too. Mist uh, was very influential to me, but Riven was the game that devoured my soul. So. <laughs> oh, that's where it went. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think Riven, a lot of soul. Riven for me, like taught me that I remember playing the, the, the children's game with the work to learn Dunny numbers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it just, in my tiny child's brain in the 90s, I was just like, my God, you can tell a story with objects in the environment. And just like <laughs> blew my world open and has fully, like, has served me through 10 years of working in the games industry of just yeah. being like, oh, you can tell these passive stories with environments, with objects. And all of the games do that, but Riven was the one that really started that off in a way that stuck with me. Yeah. Because everything in this game is five. <laughs> right. Everything is five. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pointed out that um, in one of the earlier, earlier panels about, and I didn't even notice this, the, uh, the, the time of the music, so rather than being three, four, or four, four, or whatever, it was five, four in oh one. Oh my God. And then it was like seven, four in, 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 Revel in End of Ages or something like that. Like it was really, if you listen to the main theme and how it, like if you, 
I'm sorry. My, I'm having a brain fart on going, exactly how that, that conversation went, but like it was, I hadn't even noticed it. And I was like, wait, that's pretty listen amazing. to that again. Cause that was totally mind blowing. So I anyway, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <What> darn. <laughs> and, and after hearing that, you know, there's still Easter eggs and abduction that haven't been discovered. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I have Get a to-do to list after we're done here. I haven't finished abduction yet. I really need to finish that. <laughs> it's, uh, I like, I really like what they did there. Tweet, can I see the, the tattoos on your arm there? I'm actually really intrigued by what's going on there. If only you, they were relevant I'm to Mist in some way. Huh. Oh, <laughs> wait, they are. Oh, look at that. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Oh, that's fabulous. Nice. Oh, the tree. Little great tree going on. I love that. Oh, yeah. Oh, shaky head. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I think we're about out of time. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I hope you're enjoying Mysterium. I don't know if you're sticking around for the other panels, but um, yeah, this is this is definitely, we. I think that our, our record attendance was last year at like over 200 and i think we have over 800 uh, virtual attendee attendees this year so like this is this is this is pretty phenomenal um and so yeah and this and it's also opening up a huge opportunity for folks who normally can't make it every year you know we we've got folks in australia and uh london and and italy and it's great so um you know this is the the this the world renowned fan art panel of fanciness <laughs> So, um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I, thank peace. you for hosting. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could all talk for another two hours. I was going to say that we, we, I know we have plenty of content to be like, okay, for the, until, until we fall asleep on our keyboards. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to participate in arts and crafts chats later if possible because yes. i want to talk about this stuff absolutely <laughs> so yeah there are there are some um unofficial uh discussion rooms and one of them is is crafting time and it's just kind of an art and craft time and that's like chatting or actively crafting you know uh kind of a thing so you're welcome to do that i have live painting uh tomorrow and so folks are welcome to watch or join. I, I wasn't really planning on joining, but yeah, last night everyone was like, not everyone, but lots of people were messaging me going, so what paint do I need? And what, you know, and I was like, oh, <laughs> we're doing a paint along. So yeah, we're going to be doing Bob Ross tomorrow. Um, <laughs> are you, are you going to be wearing the wig? You've got to have the wig. <laughs> no, but uh, opening ceremonies yesterday, my husband uh, had the Tay background for him and he I had it positioned that. just so <laughs> Right. That would be yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe I, I have a lot of hair, so I might be able to do something with the with the style of it and kind of, you know. After background. after this year's past the brush, I foresee people cosplaying as architectural elements of this <laughs> games. <laughs> Mika's library head eating the red and blue pages killed me. Everybody oh, should God. watch that video just for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that one was lovely all right we need to turn off the stream because we have the next okay. one starting in in a, in a little bit but um uh okay hooray and thanks y'all for tuning in thank you so much for tuning in Bye. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>